Please, uh, Abraham, if you would, go ahead and tell us what happened. Yes. Um, in my book, The Echo from D. Laplace, I go into some detail concerning the uh, Chicago event. Now, let me just uh, preface this by saying this, that uh, when the president went to Iana's part, I saw some conduct con- concerning the activities of the Secret Service of drinking the laxity and the um, the anger that they had against President Kennedy uh, that I thought was detrimental to his protection. Now, I didn't just stop there. I went into the chief of the United States Secret Service and told him what I had seen and uh-huh. what I had witnessed with my own two eyes, the, the uh, attitude against the president. As a matter of fact, I told the uh, chief of the Secret Service, that was U.E. Ballman, point blank, that uh, it was my opinion that if uh, shots were fired at the president, an assassination attempt would be made upon the president, the Secret Service would not react, that they would just stand there and let the president be assassinated. Now, I told the chief of the Secret Service that, and that was on about on or about July the 5th of 1961. Now, when I asked off the detail and came back to Chicago and started working as a field agent, uh, we were inundated with threats against the president. Huh. The most serious threat uh, we we had at one time was down in Miami, Florida, where the, uh, a conversation between a man named Miltier, who was a right winger, was intercepted by uh, the sheriff of the county down there in Florida, and uh, we we had a recording of what was said, and they were discussing ways to assassinate President Kennedy. And uh, Miltier recommended, said that uh, the way to get to the president was uh, from a tall building using a rifle with a telescopic sight. And that is the way that the president was killed in Dallas, Texas. Now, in the meantime, I'm harping on the fact uh, to anybody who would listen to Inspector Kelly to do something about the conduct and the drinking of the United States Secret Service agents that were surrounding the president. Now, it wasn't each and every one of those agents, but it was a few around that that were really unqualified to be anywhere near the president of the United States, and that presented a danger to me. Now, as an agent in Chicago, I was privy to a lot of investigations that were going on. Now, these investigations were deep-sixed after the president was assassinated. Now, one investigation started in March of uh, 1963, where Mr. Martineau, who was assistant agent in charge of the United States Secret Service, received a telephone call from a man who identified himself as Lee, who said that the, the, uh, an attempt was going to be made to assassinate the president when he came to Chicago. Now, uh, that case was turned over by Mr. Martineau to the Chicago police without any investigation by the Secret Service. Now, again, we had another case here in Chicago involving a, a, a person, Escherver. Escherver was a member of the Cuba, of a Cuban organization. On uh, about October of uh, 30th of, of uh, 1963, Escherer was heard making the statement that President Kennedy was about to be assassinated. Now, uh, we got an agent to interview Escherer, and we sent an informant to work uh, alongside with uh, with uh, to get next to Escherer to see what he could find out. Now, the person who was handling that investigation, Agent Noonan, Joe Noonan, was very disgusted because. His informant uh, was telling him that the FBI were telling the informant not to cooperate with the Secret Service. Now, so we have a man who has said the president is going to be assassinated, and we have another informant in there who is telling the investigating agent that the FBI doesn't want him to cooperate with the Secret Service. And that seemed pretty odd to me. Now, there was a third investigation involving a set of Cubans. A woman happened to go into a small rooming house and saw, and I don't know under what circumstances that she saw these, but there were about four rifles in a hotel room. 
And now, I don't know if she saw him in the closet or threw the cover back or just what it was, but uh, she notified the United States Secret Service. They sent two agents out there to, to investigate. And from the landlady, we found that uh, two were identified as being uh, Latinos or Cubans, and there were two European men who were along with them. Now, what happened on that, that case was muffed by the Secret Service. When I say muffed, I mean that during the process of trying to tell them and keep them under surveillance, the Secret Service blew it by letting their radio sound off in the presence of one of the suspects. And the suspects huh. took off, and this was on about huh. November the 2nd of uh-huh. 1963, just 20 days before the president was assassinated. Wow. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Bolden, here's my $64,000 question. As I understand it, the uh, this plot in Chicago and possibly the one you were just talking about with this woman where the, the Secret Service blew it, was any of this information ever passed to the Secret Service in Dallas? No, it was not. As a, there as you a go. matter of fact, the, there the, you go. Hello. the investigative the house uh, 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 committed that investigated the assassination after the Warren Commission specifically said that this was not uh, telegraphed to Dallas. But I can't understand why it was not because the information concerning Miami was in what we call the uh, book that the Secret Service, uh, uh, I don't know if I should go too deeply in, into that or not, but it, it's, uh, it's a book that we discuss different cases. In other words, it's, file, it's files on cases that the agents can yeah, share so yeah. they can start coordinating yeah, right. their activities for defense, right? That, 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 that's right. It's called yeah. a record. It's, right. it's called a record. Yeah. That's what but none called. of this was sent to Dallas, okay? So they just sent him down there into uh, uh, good old Texas where they had already spit and hit uh, the United Nations ambassador, uh, Stephen. Uh, just a few weeks before, and a lot of people were warning Kennedy not to go, and and people in Texas, you know, thought thought he was soft on communism, and you know, and uh, there was still a lot of segregationist in Texas, but but so they're going to go send him down there on a on a little tour, but they're not going to tell the Dallas office that there's been these assassination attempts. Incredible. Yeah, that, Incredible. They, uh, apparent, apparently, they did not. Uh, but uh, my own opinion is that uh, they did know about it and did nothing about it because what happened after that, after the Escherbier case, all of the uh, documents containing uh, pertaining to these cases that were active in Chicago were all bundled up. The files were cleared of these documents and taken into the office of the assistant special agent in charge. Huh. Now, some of the reports were redictated in order to make it seem like that the investigations of the Escherer case happened after the president was assassinated <laughs> instead of before he was assassinated. Wow. So they were focusing in on uh, Lee Harvey Oswald as being the lone assassin. So mm-hmm. they had to destroy and hide and conceal some of these reports in order to make that an actuality, in did, order to misguide the public. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did, did anyone... Uh, Put two and two together and remember that the tip by Lee in Chicago was a rather coincidental name to Lee in Dallas. I imagine, I, be, I honestly believe that they did, but they didn't discuss it with me. I, I know see. I put it together. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. I put it together. I, I can't understand why those supervisors couldn't put the same thing together. Well, I, I think of course, yeah. I was watching pretty close because... I felt that the president, President Kennedy, was in in much danger uh, of being ex- assassinated. Yes. I could just feel it. It was just just in the air. Hey, Abraham, would you have given your life to save John Kennedy? Yes. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm often asked that question, and in a way, I did. You have to understand that because I yes. uh, tried That's... to speak out. That's where and, we're going. And yeah. tried to bring what I knew about uh, the activities of the Secret Service and the investigations that were occurred in Chicago without without any results whatsoever. 
when I tried to uh, bring that to the attention of the officials who were investigating the assassination of President Kennedy, I paid uh, dearly. You might say I paid with my life. I did give my life for yeah. President Kennedy. I think uh, so. Because, but before we get off of the thing, I've got to ask you this. I, I want to clarify this. Mr. Boland, prior to the assassination, you really did not know the name Lee Harvey Oswald, did you? No. We, no. no we it had, was only uh, afterwards that Lee Harvey Oswald became a household name, and you began to realize that the informant in the Chicago case had been named Lee. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I made okay. the connection. I, I yeah. made that connection myself. I didn't bring it forth to uh, to my supervisor or anything like that because I was a constant complaint about this thing because I was telling the Secret Service that something needed to be done to to be done about some of the agents who were surrounding the president. I even brought it up to uh, Inspector Kelly when he came to Chicago. Now, Inspector Kelly ended up being the uh, prime investigator for the Secret Service after the president was assassinated. Mm -hmm. President Kelly was appointed to be over the investigation. Now, 